Hi, I am Dr. Sanjay Agarwal, your ENT educator at an academy. Right. Now, I've been teaching ENT for 18, 19 years now. I've taught in almost all the institutes across the country. And I've also written three books in the bar game. If you read the names on the screen, the first two are directed towards PG for NEET. And the last one is towards the FMG students who are uh, aspiring to write MCI screening exams. So I bring a huge amount of experience with me when I teach ENT, so it really makes sense that you watch this video. But before I start the main video, I also want to tell you that this month, that is month of July, every weekday I am taking one hour free session, free session on different topics from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. So because it is free, just come and join that course session because it is going to be almost uh, 20 sessions i'm going to have 20 hours of ent absolutely free we have done few but we are still continuing right now we are going through the instruments of ent we are doing instruments we have done some of them and we are still doing instruments today is going to be the instrument on uh, probably throat or maybe nose so please check out at 7 pm please uh, uh, invite your friends your colleagues to join this free course of ent one hour session on different topics you can also suggest the session uh, topic that you want. I will take up that topic, any topic that you wish to study in this one hour, free of cost, I will do it for you. Right? So let's dive straight away into the, uh, the syndromes that we are going to talk about today. Today we are going to talk about two syndromes mainly and one of them is this Pediatric autoimmune neuropsychiatric disorder associated with streptococcus. The short form is PANDAS. Now this word PANDAS is important, the short form. This is what they ask you. So when they ask you PANDAS in related to URDI, then you must know the full form that is pediatric autoimmune neuropsychiatric disorder associated with streptococcus. So this is essentially a neuropsychiatric disorder in kids, but this gets aggravated or manifest only when there is a streptococcal infection of the tonsil. <clears throat> right. Now, the second syndrome that we are going to deal with is also related to tonsil because tonsil, as you know, in ENT is a very, very important topic. Tonsil and adenoid together, they become very, very important topic. So, you have to do tonsil in uh, the entire tonsils and related points thoroughly. But today, we are going to discuss two syndromes. One of them is this. Now, when you talk about tonsils, you have to know tonsillitis, different types of tonsillitis. The most common is lateral tonsillitis, then follicular tonsillitis, membranous tonsillitis. Especially membranous tonsillitis can be a image-based question because the membrane of the tonsil in membranous tonsillitis can be due to streptococcus, the same pathogen, streptococcus, which is the most common pathogen called the membrane in the throat. But diphtheria can also cause. Diphtheria is less common nowadays, but it's still a potential pathogen that can cause membrane. Then other causes of membrane are like uh, mononucleosis, infectious mononucleosis, then candidiasis, sometimes agranulocytosis. So a lot of causes of the membrane in the throat. So how do you differentiate one membrane in the throat from other membrane in the throat? All that you have to know. Even last, I think last meat exam, we had asked a question on membrane in the throat and that was diphtheria, right? So although diphtheria is not the most common cause of membrane in the throat, streptococcus is, but still you have to know. So then tonsil you have to know, tonsillectomy, uh, newer technologies for doing tonsillectomy. Nowadays we do co-ablation, radio frequency tonsillectomy. So a lot of questions they ask you on tonsils, you cannot ignore that topic along with adenoid. Right. Now when the tonsil or the adenoid gets infected with streptococcus, not other pathogens, streptococcus, then suddenly this hidden syndrome gets manifested in these people and this is uh, pandas. So if you notice, that children with pandas will suddenly show signs of obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD, or tics, where their finger moves, you know, tics, you all know, or both, OCD plus tics both. And like I said, this is usually hidden. Sometimes the parents doesn't even know about this and it will suddenly manifest when the child has a streptococcal infection of the tonsil and the adenoids. So it aggravated by adenoid and tonsil infection of streptococcus, pandas. The name is more important than anything else. 
but it is essentially a neuropsychiatric disease it's not a ent problem only that when the tonsil gets infected it actually manifests but we don't have much to do as an ent specialist we don't have much to do in this patient so we almost always refer to this, uh, this patient to the neuro psychiatrist or a pediatrician you know but yes from the ent point of view you have to treat that tonsil uh, tonsil which is infected with streptococcus obviously the initial part is a medicinal treatment but if it does not resolve then you may have to resort to a surgical treatment tonsillectomy which i was just talking about so sometimes in this patient tonsillectomy is required now this streptococcus of the tonsil is very notorious you know tonsil has crypts you know crypts in the tonsil the streptococcus gets lodged in those crypts and starts creating problem they can remain there for a long duration of time and therefore they can cause aggravation of this kind of syndrome even they can cause rheumatic heart disease the tonsil the streptococcus in the tonsil acts like a streptococcus uh, antigen and body produces antibodies against that streptococcus antibody and these antibodies which are produced by the body they go and settle in the uh, hearts in the kidneys and cause rheumatic diseases rheumatic problems so streptococcus in the tonsils should not be taken lightly they are really really dangerous one of them is pandas right so this syndrome is less important from the exam point of view the name i told you is more important but the next syndrome that we are going to deal with is an extremely important syndrome and which one is that this i'm sure you know about this it's griselle's syndrome many of you know about this question was asked two years back about griselle's syndrome in the neat phys exam so we teach in our lectures everybody teaches this i certainly do and because it was asked in the exam every mcq carries a question on griselle's syndrome but griselle's syndrome is what is it actually <coughs> it's a non traumatic subluxation of the atlanto axial joint <clears throat> it's non traumatic so what got causes the subluxation either infection in the head and neck area head and neck area infection in urti especially infection of the adenoid adenoiditis and tonsillitis these are the two most common infection that can cause this syndrome and the subluxation adenoid you know you know the location of the adenoid in the nasopharynx adenoid is located in the Posterior superior wall of the nasopharynx, just in front of this joint, the plantar axial joint, just in front of that, and that's why the infection, the inflammation from this adenoid can easily go through the tissue and cause damage of the uh, ligaments in that area, either damage or even a weakness of the ligament in that area, causing subluxation of the joint. The second important thing that can cause this is surgery in this area, surgery of the head and neck, especially. adenoidectomy and tonsillectomy so when you do surgery and again that inflammation of the surgery surgical procedure can travel through the tissue and cause damage and weakness of these ligaments and cause subluxation of the joint so most of this uh, most of the time the syndrome is related to adenoiditis or adenoidectomy tonsillitis and tonsillectomy but yes other infections of the this area head and neck area other surgeries of this area can sometimes cause griselle syndrome the name is very very important now if i talk about the etiology <clears throat> i just covered the etiology when i was describing the disease which is any inflammatory disease of the head and neck area and urti upper respiratory tract infection <clears throat> so in this category again i want to mention that mainly comes the adenoid and the tonsillar infections which are very very common in this area also the third look at the third one point third and fourth point tonsillectomy adenotonsillectomy and adenoidectomy all these surgeries certainly can cause <coughs> griselle syndrome in fact uh, you know when we talk about uh, tonsillectomy the most common complication of tonsillectomy is uh, uh, bleeding hemorrhage different type of primary secondary reaction and all that and the second most common uh, complication that we talk about tonsillectomy is dislocation of the joints this is dislocation of the joint that's why this is subluxation either we talk about dislocation of the atlant this temporomandibular joint this one or atlanto axial joint so you can call it dislocation of the atlanto axial joint or you can call it a subluxation of the atlanto <coughs> axial joint same thing now how does this patient of griselle syndrome present there are three main things there is torticollis where the head is pushed to one side because the the spine the vertebra is not able to hold the head properly so there is a torticollis and there can be pain in the cervical area of course there is damage of the tissue so pain is certainly possible and numbness in the arm because the 
nerve supply of the arm, they come in the same area. That nerve supply travel from the same area and that can cause numbness in the arm. But usually, most of the, I can say almost majority of these patients, they have very mild problems. And therefore, you can just, uh, you know, keep painkillers, some supportive management, antibiotics to take care of the inflammation, and it relieves. But uh, less commonly, it could be more severe problem. <clears throat> and in more severe problem, the thing is that whatever numbness the patient has, whatever, whatever the tissue damage has happened, if the vertebra is not supported well, then it can cause further damage. You know, permanent damage of the nerves can happen. The numbness in the arm can be long lasting. The pain in the cervical spine can be long lasting. The torticollis can be permanent. And in these patients, to avoid further damage and to even support the head, we have some headgear, the sport headgear. You can see one of the model of headgear is shown in this image. <clears throat> so this supports the head with the chest, this image, so that A, the head gets supported, and B, it's not going to cause further damage of the tissue. But this image is showing just one uh, model of the headgear or head support. There could be different models of the head support also. So it makes sense that you can go to the Google and search for other, because this can be an image based question. This is a potential image based question where they can tell you that if this patient underwent uh, tonsillectomy or adenoidectomy, and after that, this kind of gear was required in this patient. So, what has probably happened? So, you know, probably it is Grissel syndrome. So, Grissel syndrome can certainly be just an MCQ like it was asked last, last year. Uh, Grissel syndrome is seen in which of the following diseases. The answer was adenoidectomy in that question, but they can ask you this image based question also. <coughs> right. So treatment in mild cases is just a conservative supporting management. In severe cases, you have to put this kind of gear. So these are the only two uh, syndromes that are related to tonsil that I wanted to cover today. But uh, before I wind up, I just want to tell you about two courses that we are coming up in ENT. One is this, look at this name, Operation ENT PG 2021. Operation of NEET PG 2021, we are going to kill it together. Right? And this, this has already started on the 6th of August, you can see, and you're going to write up till December, just before your NEET exam. <clears throat> and it's going to be taught by all the major educator of the country, the top educators, right? Now you see that it is divided into two parts. Till October, if you read the first sentence, till October, the course is covered concisely. All the topics, all the subjects, all the 19 subjects are going to be taught concisely till October. And ENT is going to be taught in 16 hours by me. And then October onwards, we have second session starting. And this is MCQ based, live MCQs, where you have shorter session. And ENT is going to be just 5 hours. So we have a concise course followed by a MCQ based course. And total is the entire plan for you. So in my opinion, this is a complete plan for need PG. You don't have to do anything else besides this because this... Four or five months, you cannot do too much. So if you join this course, you don't. Have, I can almost say that you don't have to revise anything on your own. We'll do it for you because we are going to do concisely and then MCQ based. And you can see that all the 19 subjects are covered. And if you go to the website, you know each subject will be covered in how many hours, how much hours for the concise course, how many hours for the MCQ part. ENT, if you look at ENT, ENT is going to be 16 hours as I told you, the concise part and five hours of the MCQs. Total is 21 hours. Otherwise, ENT alone I teach for more than 30 hours, 30-35 hours regular course. Here you are having two courses of ENT in 21 hours. That's it. Right. And like I told you, it's going to be taught by the major, the top faculties of the country. And in ENT, I'm going to take your session, Dr. Sanjay Agarwal. So this is one course and I'm coming on my own. So you can use this uh, code referral code DR Sanjay 10 to get 10% discount on this course and any other courses. These are the uh, faculties that is going to teach you this particular course. But like I said, besides this, I'm coming up with a course only for FMG students who are going to write uh, the MCI screening exam of this August 2020. And this course is called Crash Course plus MCQs of ENT for FMG August 2020. It is going to start in, on the 15th of July and end on 22nd of July. Just five days. Just five days. 
and in five days we are going to cover the entire ENT and again this is going to be divided into two sessions each day. The first session will have two hours of theory where I will teach you all the high yield points of ENT that we require for FMG exam or MCI exam and this is going to be followed by one hour of high yield MCQs total of three hours each day and for five days so 15 hours you are going to kill ENT for uh, students aspiring to write MCI screening exam because MCI requirement is slightly different from the PG and NEET exam requirement and that's why I have come up with this course this is the last minute course, minute course and I highly recommend that you join this course and not only you invite your friends and your colleagues to join this course because I feel that it is highly recommended just before your uh, MCI exam right it's like a last moment revision so that's all it's going to be today and please watch out for other YouTube videos and that session at 7 o'clock on an academy platform so I thank you all the best for your future and signing off as of now bye